so today we're going to talk about all the ways that we utilize barrels, especially these plastic barrels on the farm. The first number one disclaimer I'm going to say right now, know what was in the barrel before, make sure it's not poisonous to your animals, make sure it's cleaned out, and if in question, don't use it. Um, we stick to um, the plastic barrels. Uh, a lot of places that use cooking oil and stuff like that use these big drums of stuff. Just be careful with your chemicals. Know what was in it before. Know what you're getting when you get it. We pick them up for about five bucks, you know. Um, this is our trash barrel. No big question there. Remember, you can cut them in half, use them for um, tubs, for flowers, water troughs. Um, if the tops are sealed up, you can use both sides. If not, you know, you've got holes in them. Um, then, we'll start with this. When you do go to cutting them down to be trash barrels, and we cut this one just because it was easier for us, but if you're really good, you can just kind of trim them out, and these make great uh, tree rings for your fruit trees. So, I use it for all kinds of stuff. These two right here are, I'm gonna say kind of fancy, but not really. If you're gonna do this style of feeder, make sure that you have a stiffer kind of barrel. Reason being, if you look at the front, the horses put their tushies on them and itch. This one we've had to drill some holes in the bottom because of the way it's now formed. It doesn't drain right, so we've put holes in the bottom. Um, the wire has about broke through here twice, so we're going to have to put us a plate on there or start down here and drill different holes to wire it up to the fence. This is just rebar. These are really easy to make um, if you know anybody that welds or you could actually find a piece of um, cattle panel. It would probably do the same thing. Um, this is just put through and screwed on. This one is welded with a little flat, I, I don't know, somebody else made it, and then it's cut out. Now, once you get the tops cut out and make the little rings, your fruit tree rings, the front of these two, now this is not the exact ones, but if you screw them together in the center, and drill holes in them. This is now a hay feeder. This is an old frame that we had and we just wired it on there. Um, the plastic holds the hay up off the ground. The animals don't waste so much. And RJ got to go through and just <laughs> and play. So kids love to do that. Um, so he did that. That leaves these. Then the other kind of feeders that we make, pretty common, is just cut them in half long ways and screw them together in the center, creating this lovely little feeder. You can put legs on them. Um, there's a ton of things you can do with this style feeder. We just kind of let them throw them around. Uh, but anyway, RJ and I will take you around the farm and show you just a few more uses on those barrels. Okay, another form of barrel that we use on the farm, or a form of feeder, is this one. Now this one we have left the top on instead of cutting it all the way off. There was something happened to the top. I can't remember if it got cracked or it wouldn't work for anything. But we left this and you now can screw this into wood and secure it if you need to. Um, you can secure it pretty much anywhere by this end. And that way we just have to put a, uh, the legs on it. We just kind of dig it down in there and then you can just put screws through this and fasten it. We don't fasten it to metal pipe, but you get the idea. It's screwed into the wood around the inside of the stalls. Another prime example of how we use barrels. All right, so we've just cut out that yep. thing. Now, we have seen where people do this same one and then cut out the inside of the top, and you can feed your hogs without getting in, correct? Yep, I need to get hog. Yep. Now that's a Crystal X tub, right? Yep. Kind of a, it's not a plastic barrel, but it's plastic. And then how is this one done? It's just cut in half. And then... Okay, now flip it over and show them the legs. And when we first, okay, can we, <laughs> a little, okay. And it's just a two by four cut along that so that it curves. Then flip it down and show them what we did. Um, we put the washers with a screw in it and we silicone them in there and son for the first couple of years these held what water water they were water truss not feed truss after a few years you just can't get the screws and washers tight enough you'd have to replace the wood correct yeah. i mean it just doesn't get tight enough so 
hidden here in the barn is another example of how a barrel can be used. This one is kind of fancier, built by an older guy. Um, I guess he didn't have much else to do, but he, he made, made several of them, and yeah. I think he sold them. But um, he used to do baby bottle caps, and so he made the hay feeder on top, and then the barrel down at the bottom, and it really is held up quite nicely. Correct? Yes. Okay. And here you can see variations. Okay, so the tops, why do we leave the tops on? Keep the birds from pooping in them. And falling in and dying. Yeah. And like the first time you have to get <laughs> a dead bird out of the water trough is kind of nasty, isn't it? Yeah. So. All right, so how come this one's shorter? This one's for the babies and this one's for the big ones. Okay, so um, we just put different sizes out. They can drink. I mean, the big ones can drink from the little ones. And as the little ones grow, they can get uh -huh. to the big ones. They're not allowed. <laughs> They're not supposed to. Yeah, they do. So, anyway, there's two more barrels. Let's head out to the barn yard and uh, see if we can find any more. All right. This here is an industrial sized barrel. Um, we used the lid in the goat pen as a feeder. Yeah, it, it was kind of, it's real thick walled. We don't know what kind that is, but what does this barrel do here? It catches runoff from the barn. Yep, where those two meet, runoff from the barn, and we use it to water any animals in the barn, right? And when we cut off the top, the top is over there laying flat past those other pans, and we actually feed on it. So it creates a nice round feeder, right? Yep. Okay, here's another example of how we use a barrel. It's also an industrial. It's not as heavy duty as that other one, but it is an industrial barrel. And we just cut a Y, and our doggy, oh, and it looks like a chicken goes up in there, too. So, <laughs> it was a dog house, now it's a chicken nest, and I will be cleaning that out. The only downfall to using these barrels is, if they're not being weighted down or full of water, they're blowing away, floating away, so, you'll have to go chasing them. Where's the furthest you've chased them to? The road. <laughs> yep. And the, with the wind, they only they normally just roll and blow. So if you can keep them up underneath a stall, that's fine. But with the the rain, if you've got good fencing, they'll just float around inside your pen. Correct. Yep. All right. So downfall to the plastic barrels is they do float and wow. they uh, blow. Correct. All right, comment below and let us know what you use barrels for or any ingenious little feeders that you've come up with or water troughs or whatever, flower containers. What all did we mention? <laughs> Anything and everything. Let us know how you build your contraptions.